nombre es Gary, eh, estoy eh, engineering director en Trainline. I'm going to stop my Spanish there. <laughs> <laughs> You'll hear me talk really slowly and think about everything I say. Um, thank you for, for being here. So Trainline is, uh, a, is Europe's leading train booking platform, rail platform. Um, we are predominantly in the UK, France, Spain, and Italy, but we sell tickets all over, all over Europe. Um, we have a huge development team here in Barcelona, um, which I have a, a few, few squads here, as well as uh, teams in London and in Paris. Um, Paris is where we, we acquired a business called Captain Train, who look after mainly our big European integration. Um, they work predominantly in Ruby. Um, we also have development teams who own a large part of our UK infrastructure who work in .NET. Um, and we typically work as cross-functional teams. Um, we have uh, roughly in the region of about 40 squads working cross-functionally across a number of different products um, and in many, many different locations. Um, so I hope you have a really great meetup. This is a little bit about us. Um, if you have any questions, happy to, happy to answer them. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to speak to my person. Thank you. Hello, camera. Uh, okay, so we are Barcelona Software. Uh, nice t-shirt. Uh, we have t-shirts. If you want to buy them, we don't buy, we don't sell them. You give, give us donations, and we trade you a t-shirt. Uh, so yeah, we do this meetup thing every month, usually, maybe. Uh, we're trying to find new places. Uh, thank you, Trainline, for having us. Uh, so yeah, if you have an idea of something to talk, uh, talk to me or to Pablo, and we will try to schedule your talk at some point. And now, Molly. <laughs> Hi, camera and everyone. <laughs> Hi. Uh, so uh, I'm Lauren, and I'm a software engineer at uh, Conjure Labs, which works on a project called Zulip, which is a team chat application. So today, um, I want to just have a, a present and probably chat with folks um, about online chat. <laughs> and hopefully we're gonna have an interesting discussion um, and about how we can organize chat to be an efficient place to collaborate and communicate online. So just to start out a little bit about me, as you can see, and I have to sit here because those are cameras. Um, so, uh, I've been contributing to Zulip for about three years, um, and I've been two and a half years working as a core team member at Condor Labs, and um, I've been living in Spain for about eight years. Started out in Coruña, went through Valencia, ended up here in Barcelona, which I love, it's a beautiful city. Um, before that, I lived in the Bay Area in San Francisco. And when I was living there, I had a totally separate career. I worked in the arts uh, nonprofit, nonprofit education area. So I have a background in dance and theater and so um, and teaching. So you might see a little bit of that come out today in my presentation. Okay, so team chat. We're gonna, I'm gonna do a teacher thing here. And I wanna uh, kind of check in in the room, like what are some team chat applications that you use or familiar with? Anyone? Mattermost. Rocket chat. Rocket chat. Matrix. Matrix. Element in particular is their chat app. Slack, I think. Slack. Yeah. <laughs> Teams. Teams. Microsoft Teams. <laughs> I like to remember. <laughs> any, any other chat apps that people use? Discord. Discord is another yeah. one. All right, let's see. I mean, does we... WhatsApp count? <laughs> I mean, WhatsApp probably wouldn't be like a team chat, you know, it's more like a one-on-one a -on -one chat. Um, so, so yeah, so it's definitely um, an area that has a lot of different, um, a lot of things going on. It has a lot of open source uh, projects too, so Zulip is one of them, Rocket Chat, Element, we mentioned Mattermost, all that mentioned. And then there are, you know, proprietary, like I said, Teams, Discord, Slack. And so, Everyone wants, so so I want everyone in the room to think about one of these applications on the board that you use often for maybe open source work you do or your job that you do. Um, and we're going to do uh, a little group survey. Uh, can you take one and pass it around? Okay. All right, 
so we're going to do this survey as a group. Um, so it's going to be kind of majority is going to, we're going to raise our hands and the majority will go with what we, um, uh, what we picked. All right, one for me. Did you go? Do you want? <laughs> okay, so everybody has a number, hopefully. I think it's on one right. Um, so we're going to go through the survey, and we're just going to—it's going to ask some questions about your team chat experience, and so we're and feel we're going to uh, discuss it kind of as a group and vote on what we think. Okay, so chat. Uh, zoom in a little bit. Uh, chat notifications disrupt your focus. Often, sometimes, rarely, or never. So thinking about the chat app that you picked. Slack, Discord, Mattermost, Element. Um, who would be often? Mm. Often. Notifications. OK, one. How about sometimes? Six, and I'll say seven. OK, and rarely or never, I think. All right, we got one. We so. are silenced. <laughs> ah! uh, that's a tricky one. Turning off all notifications. All right, so we're going to vote for some Did anyone have number one on their sheet? One. One. Okay, so, and you said sometimes. Yes. And what app were you thinking about in particular? What app? Uh, what app? Uh, yeah, which teams. Uh, teams. Teams. So sometimes you're distracted by notifications yes. on Teams. Okay. And how can you configure those a lot, or are they kind of like... Well, uh, I, normally I need to, uh, to reply. <laughs> so in, if I you get a notification, I, I you gotta to reply. Be disturbed. <laughs> yeah. Need to be disturbed. <laughs> All right, number two. Responding to messages feels like now or never, even if you're busy. Like if you don't respond to it right now, when you get a chat, uh, when you see the message, you have to reply, even if you're super busy. So, uh, who's often? One, okay, sometimes, four, and rarely, four. All right, Ooh, we're a tie. Okay, who did one? Who, who said often? Okay, okay so you, um, we're going to skew towards sometimes, I think, <laughs> with that as a group. And did anyone get number two? All right, so you said uh, rarely. Uh, Which app are you thinking about? I was thinking about um, element of matrix. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah, it's, I think it depends on what it is, I guess. But a lot of it is, is things that I can answer in 10 minutes or 15 minutes. Okay. So I, I usually, like, sometimes I'll, I'll wait until I'm finished with what I'm doing, and then I'll go to the app. Okay. But sometimes I forget. <laughs> okay, I think we'll get, we'll get a question that maybe hits on that. Okay, thinking about your team chat app, you miss important messages when they get buried by later ones. So, like, you didn't see the message when it came in, and so then you find out later on you didn't see the message. Often. Anyone? No? Sometimes. Three, and rarely or never. And did anyone get number three? Uh, I have number three. Okay, which app were you thinking about? I use Signal. Signal. Okay. So that would be, yeah. You don't get... I don't have a lot of... Uh, messages. Yeah. Okay. So they, they rarely get... Uh, so I don't, like, oh. I think the key point there is important. Ah, is the chat message important? Not to <laughs> if you, maybe I miss some of them, but I don't care. Yeah, you're <laughs> like, not important ones. It's not too important. But I assume you don't use Signal for work or something. Uh, do you? No. Yeah. No. 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 Um, okay, question number four. You sift through dozens of messages to find the handful that you actually care about in chat. Often. One. Sometimes, one, two, three, rarely or never. One, two, three, four, five. Um, and did anyone get four? I'm four. You're four. So you said? I said rarely. Rarely. Uh, which, which app are you thinking about? I mean, either Element or, or Teams. Like. Mm -hmm. 
if it's important, somebody will send me an email or fill, mm. fill it to me again, right? Like, if it's there, it's there. If it's too far away on the backlog, it's mm -hmm. too far in the backlog. Right. So figure it out again. You'll figure it out again. But you did miss it in the chat. Yeah. I did, did miss, miss it. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Number five, you ask teammates to email you or text you instead of using the team chat. So if you're like, if it's important, don't send it on chat. I'm going to miss it. Please send it to me via email or text me. Often. Anybody? Sometimes? One. Rarely or never. Everybody else. Okay. And I had number five. So rarely or never, I'm obviously thinking about Zulip. <laughs> and um, uh, yeah, it's just oftentimes my email gets way more disorganized than my uh, than Zulip um, does for me. So so I rarely have to. Yeah. Decisions get made without you because you weren't available on chat. So like people are having a conversation, you're not around, you're in a meeting, you're working your head down, you turned your notifications off, and you miss the chats, and, so, and they made a choice without you. That does it often, sometimes, to, no, and that rarely or never. Did anyone get number six? Uh, yeah. Uh, no, uh, really or never because, mm, yeah, normally we are a team and the decisions are uh, all together and I uh, take care about the infra, so I have to get the decision. So, <laughs> so, so you're <laughs> always in the meeting. <laughs> yeah, I'm the responsible, so we are, uh, <laughs> they have to wait for me. Ah, that's a, that's <laughs> okay, it's a, it's a team chat that, yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, it makes sense. If you're, if you're a key person, they're not going to make the call without you. Um, so your team, you're thinking about your team chat app, and you think about past conversations, like from a while ago. Um, do you use, is it a struggle to go back and find? Oh yeah, we we talked about that here, or some we talked about it here. Where was that? Do you often struggle to do this? Do you sometimes <coughs> or never? And anyone have seven? Nope. Yeah. And so what are you thinking about? I was thinking about Slack. Slack. Okay. And that you were sometimes? Yes. Okay. And any other feedback or No, I mean it's just I guess that it's hard because sometimes I need to go to a conversation from a month back and I don't see any straightforward way <laughs> to find it unless I remember like the magic keyboard to find it, right? Yep. The magic. Especially when people send voicemails, then mm. it's a nightmare. And you cannot <laughs> search for a keyword. <laughs> um, you miss important information on side chat threads. So something goes off in a thread, and you miss that information on the application. Sometimes? Or, no, sorry, often. Anyone? Sometimes? We're given two, and rarely or never. Okay. Alright, so that's maybe everyone. And uh, anyone have eight? Yes. Eight. Uh, so you were rarely or never? Or yeah, sometimes? rarely or never. I'm thinking of Slack. Slack? What we use. Uh -huh. But I take every message. So. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I don't miss anything on chat. Yeah. I'm going, I'm reading everything. Um, Okay, who works with people in different countries on the globe? One, two, okay. Woo, a lot of people. Great. Everybody. Me too. Um, so having a chat conversation with somebody in, I don't know, Argentina or China or Australia is difficult. On the app you're thinking about. Is this often a problem? One, two, three. Yeah, that's not so hard. Okay. Three? Uh, sometimes. Two and never really um, three. Four. Alright, wait. Nine. There's nine, so but the majority were sometimes or never. Or was it two, three, three? Sometimes. Yeah. 
I mean, having conversations with people in different time zones is fun. Okay, and now we're going to go into our bodies. We're going to think about, okay, when I see chat messages, do I get like, oh, or am I like, relax, cool, this is fine. Is chat chaotic and stressful for your organization? Often, or for you, your experience. Sometimes, rarely or never. And did anyone get 10? Oh, yeah. Yes. Uh, I was thinking about Google Chat. I Google don't know Chat. the name exactly. Uh -huh. The one integrated on Google Tools. Uh -huh. And you said that sometimes or never? Never, but I mean, we are a team of three, so. <laughs> <laughs> There's not a lot of messages. Not a lot, yes. <laughs> Chaos is hard to create with three people unless you've got somebody. Sometimes. Um, okay, so as a group, we are a focused box. We tend to be heads down, we're sometimes missing things, so uh, obviously we made this at Zulip, so we think Zulip's going to be great for you. Um, so, back to full screen. Um, so that kind of thought about some of like the stresses or hard things about like notifications, missing things, like feeling like it's like hard, but chat also has a lot of great benefits that, you know, bring to our community. So, um, it, it can be a place to collaborate on things. It's lightweight, it's informal. It's not like an email where you have to kind of like make sure everything's right, make sure everybody's included and you be CC'd or CC'd or whatever. Um, it's interactive, um, we use lots of emojis, <laughs> chat. Um, so there are lots of benefits to chat, right? So we want this, um, uh, so we want to use chat apps and we want them to be good. So, and obviously, at Zulip, we really think chat's awesome. We have a whole um, project on it. So um, Zulip is open source. We, um, uh, let's see, just a quick timeline. Uh, in 2012, it was a, a private company that was then in 2014 acquired by Dropbox. And then in 2015, Dropbox open sourced the code. So. Um, since 2015, Zulip's so been an open source project. Um, and they did a, a week-long hack fest at Dropbox to like get all of the code, uh, all the commit messages, and get everything ready to open source and ship, and so they did that. Um, and so since that time, there's been over 1,400 contributors um, from around the world who have given to the project, um, I think, most of with, you know, more than just one commit to the project. Um, Zulip can be a self-hosted, so you could have, you know, have your own server and your own chat. We also have a, a cloud offering for folks. Um, we have so much documentation. Uh, we have contributed and uh, documentation for the hosters. We have help documentation. We have API documentation. We have integrations documentation. Um, and uh, we're committed to participating in outreach programs. So um, we participate in Tucson and Outreachy. I actually came to look through Outreachy, so um, it's definitely a project that's bringing people into open source in the community. Um, and does anyone here use Zulip besides me? I've used it. You used it for a project? Um, because I was in the outreach program, mm -hmm. I was a fellow. Right, and they so use it for their... Us to use it. <laughs> <laughs> so we yes, use it. Yes, it's their open source. Um, they have their own server, yeah. I'll do it. I use it for the Google Summer of Code channel. There's one for uh -huh. Zulip. Yep. Very, very shortly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, I think we started that last year. Yeah. And... Yeah, yeah. we use it in server. And so now I'm just going to talk a little bit about what makes it look kind of different um, from other um, chat experiences you might have had. Um, so this is really from the beginning the idea um, that came out from uh, MIT, the alums that who founded it, um, was that um, it was kind of based on a, a protocol at MIT and a, a barn owls. So and a server, uh, a, an app they had there. And so 
really it came on with this kind of like, we want to chat, we like this experience, but also we want to have conversations. And so the and so things are really organized kind of like email or a forum, where every conversation has its own topic um, that we call it. And so you can see kind of here, like in Slack or an element, you would have a channel. And then underneath that, uh, you have different conversations with different topics that are focused um, on particular things. So here we have the general channel. And different conversations are about the happy hour, about a mentorship program, et cetera. Um, and this really helps to be able to kind of read things and, and catch up on things, um, particularly uh, for folks who maybe aren't there often. So I thought I would do a little demo. Let's see if this works okay. Yeah. So, zoom in a little bit. Okay. So this is the Zulu for the Rust Lang project, which is an open source for uh, the programming language Rust. Um, and I have uh, an account with them because they give us feedback about Zulu because they use it. Um, and so I have actually not logged in to the Rust, this Zulu for many months. I'm not sure how many. Um, and so you can see here that I have, uh, this is my inbox view and I've got 107 uh, unread messages in the Zulu chat uh, channel. And, which is a lot of messages, but I can quickly kind of go through and be like, okay, is there anything that looks particularly interesting to me today? Oh, this might be something interesting. Um, okay. It seems like somebody was having trouble with the key uh, keyboard shortcut. They restarted it. I could probably look back at May 28th and be like, we were doing something, maybe, uh, maybe uh, doing a, an update or a release or something. Um, so here's something with the mobile app. Um, bad focus when scrolling. And I can see the kind of problem statement. You can see my colleague Alex jumped in. He talked about it being on the Android app. And I caught up with this conversation here. Um, um, and so it's really easy for me to go in, be like, OK, that's cool. Anything else that looks interesting? Notifications broken. When you finish reading, mm -hmm. messages disappear from the list? Disappears from my inbox, because my inbox is showing okay. me like an email inbox, what I haven't read. Um, but then I can go to. Uh, recent conversations, and, and these messages will be here, or I can find them here in the channels. Uh, here, which I've zoomed in, so it's hard to see. So yeah, so this are, these are disappearing because I've read them, and they're no longer unread messages. Um, is this just for the demo, or is this really you have almost 100 messages without being read? These are, yeah, so th this is a server I don't go into very often. <laughs> and actually here you can see in the general chat, which I have muted because I automatically got registered for that channel, but I, I'm not part of the community very much. I'm just here to see what they're going to ask you about. So I don't, you know, I have 1,200 unread messages, and I'm just going to go, cool, awesome, thanks. <laughs> not important to me. Uh, new members. You know, I could quickly scroll through new members, but again, uh, oops, filter channels, this is new members. Again, for my Zulip chat experience, uh, this is. You know, so, so I can kind of see how my colleagues and everyone's been interacting on Zulip, so. You can kind of see here how topics are kind of like changing the chat experience, right? I haven't been here. Can you imagine in like Discord if I hadn't been here for, for like one message was in May, so what, that was five months ago? Would I be able to like scroll back through hundreds of messages to find that conversation? Maybe not, so. Um, can you do an entry? Yeah. Yes, yes. So let's say uh, I want to go back to Zulip. I read through this one here. Like, oh, you 
you know what? This is important to me. I'm going to mark that in red. And then I got a little thing that says cool. You mark those in red. So those are back in my seven. And I can come back when I log in, and they'll still be on red. But if it's really important, you can click at the start, no? Mm hmm. Yep. You can start message. And where can, they, can you find them? There. Are they also organized by, by subjects there in the start? Yeah, so if I were to start a little more. And so then I can click on literal searches and go back to that conversation. And the, all, the, all the topics are automatically created? Like no, so the person who's making them uh, chooses the topic. So, um, and that is one of the things, if I go back to my presentation, which I'll talk about how we can really use topics. So that's kind of our intro to topics. And you know, how can this like help out, right? So people can participate when they're online. So um, like I said, I logged on three months later. If I wanted to post in that chat from May, I could. Um, or I could um, jump in on a conversation that maybe I'm sleeping, my colleagues in California are talking, I wake up and I can look at the, uh, the topic and say, hey, um, it's much harder for us to miss messages. I'm a moderator, and it's it's easy for me to find things in my Zulip chat. Um, it's also nice because, like, you know, maybe you have a channel, and some really experienced folks are talking, and like you're a new contributor who maybe is like, I want to say something, but I don't know where or how. You know, the new person can start a new topic and be like, Hi, I'm new here. Like, I really want to. I saw this conversation; it looked really interesting. Can we talk more about it? So. Um, and so when you have topics, and Zulip has also been like, okay, how can we make this really work for people? So um, we can move messages to a new topic, or a channel, obviously. Uh, we can resolve topics. It's kind of like an issue. Uh, we can rename topics. Um, or we can also like link different conversations together. So I um, have a few examples of we might do this. Um, all right, so this is the Zulip community development. So this is the one that I work on. With my, um, and so here was a mess, a topic that started on October 15th. So it was Tuesday, I think. Um, uh, a self-hosted uh, admin was asking about um, where the images are. Um, and you can see right here, there's a little message from the notification bot that actually says this person originally started this conversation in the user questions channel, which is uh, not a web public stream. And it got moved to the production help stream uh, in this topic. And because <coughs> Tim probably thought, hey, you know, this is a question that we want people to be able to see. Other self-hosted people might have this question. I really want this to be in this channel um, and this conversation. And then earlier, or and then yesterday, um, I was looking through as a moderator, and I saw this message that somebody sent. That was, I'm trying to set up a Zulip server for testing, and I'm stuck with my outgoing email. Well, that obviously had nothing to do with the Postgres images conversation that was going on <laughs> in the other topic. And so I looked at it, and I was like, oh, this is a new conversation. Somebody just jumped in. So I'm, as a moderator, just going to move it to its own topic. So I chose so this, this topic. this was posted in the old topic. And I said, ooh, this is off topic. This is a new conversation. This is about email. It's not about Postgres images and setup. Um, so let me move it over here. Um, and I left the breadcrumb, uh, and we were able to have a conversation focused on this here. So in that way, yes, we can totally auto-change topics. 
um, modify them. Uh, another example, my rest example, that's that example. channel called issues where people can reach out with us and report any issues they're experiencing um, and so one of the things we like to do is when an issue has been resolved um, we have a little functionality here um, where you can put a little check mark so Rohan was like I was working on uh, an issue and I noticed another issue um, and there was conversation posted a PR. Today I was like, should we resolve this? It looks like that PR you made was merged. Rohan said yes, and I said great. This topic is done. We don't need to look at it anymore. Um, the other thing we like to do with our topics here in our community is we'll add little emojis. Like um, if somebody reports something and we file an issue, so So here, when someone says filed, we can go back up here and edit the topic, which I'm realizing I don't have the edit button because I'm not logged in. <laughs> um, but if you're logged in, you have a little button that says edit, and you can add emojis or change things if there's a misspelling, etc. cetera. Um, so yes, you can totally change topics um, if something changes. And then the other example I was going to give here, this is a conversation about an API design detail about edit our policies on the server, about moving messages. And Greg made this comment here. Oh, interesting. That change should probably be documented. Because I was looking at the documentation on API register queue, and it doesn't mention the semantics that we changed there. Um, and then later on in this conversation, He's like, you know what? I went over to API documentation channel and I started a conversation here, but we can link, we've linked in between those conversations, so it's really easy for me to go back and be like, oh, what did Tim, what was the context for this? Oh, this was the context. So we are kind of like jumping between two topics that are related, but you know, it's better to have the documentation conversation in one topic and the design of the API in the other one. Um, so again, this is kind of like how um, conversations can be connected with these topics via linking. Um, any thoughts, questions, feedback? That. Okay, cool. Keep going, full screen. So when things are organized, what does this do for our communities and projects? Like leaders, obviously, can focus in on things that they need to focus their attention on. Um, moderators and core people have more tools to kind of make sure conversations are focused and useful and efficient for people. Um, new community people and end users can move their messages around. Um, they can start new conversations and some topics. Um, and chats become a repository of knowledge, which leads into kind of the final point I want to yeah, going doing well. Um, one of the other features that makes it look really cool um, is that unlike um, other most other chat products, you have to like log in to see the messages. Well, all those chats that we were looking at, we were, I wasn't logged in as a user. Those are public access streams on the internet, so anybody could go and get that information. Um, and so, what does this do? A, it lets people look at, like if you're working on an open source project, people can 
get a feel for what's the community like, what are people talking about, even before like having to create an account or having to sign up for Slack or having to get into the Discord. Um, provides external URLs, URLs, so if you're using GitLab or GitHub, you can put a link to a conversation in your community that's like, more discussion happened here about the design of this API detail, or this bug was originally reported in our community chat. Um, yeah, and so your, your community can kind of become a repository for knowledge. So this is another open source community, or uh, the, it's actually a group of researchers who are mathematicians who are trying to create theorems and prove different things, and so it's the Lean Prover community. And so you can see all of these over here, they marked as web public, so anyone can see them without logging in, and if they are curious about the FDL project, um, they can jump in. read these, com these conversations in the community without any um, login, and then maybe they say, oh, you know, I really want to wanna jump in here on, oh, well, yeah. You do have to log in if you want to actually chat with people, right? But as far as, like, actually just having the knowledge available, which is kind of like, you know, kind of the core ethos, one of the core eth uh, ethos of, of open source and communities and sharing is this you know, availability of, of knowledge and person the code. You can see online it's available. The community is co making decisions and having conversations online, you know, um, without logging in. And so, for example, here's my, uh, I was talking about you can link to things. So these are the issues I've created in GitHub for Zulip. And the vast majority of them we affectionately call our community thread CZO. Uh, chatzulip.org, and so there we go, I can click on that. Again, I'm not logged in on this browser, and we're in the issues topic. Alia reported, she said, hey, when I pasted this link into a message, it didn't get prettified, da da da. And then here we go, I filed the issue down here. And then, all that information is reachable on the GitHub issue right here. Um, again, so linking your community chat to your issue tracker. Um, actually, one of the things we like, we actually prefer people to come on CZO and chat with us before they actually report anything on, on GitHub because, you know, maybe it's something we're already tracking. You know, it's, we've got a lot of issues <laughs> are, that people have put up, so, you know, it's totally makes sense that somebody who's new or working out or a user of Zulip might not want to go searching through GitHub to be like, has someone already reported this? You know, versus, you know, come on to our community chat, you've got the core contributors, moderators, folks there be like, hey, I noticed this, has anyone reported it? And you'd be like, no, or yes, it's something we're working on, et cetera, et cetera. So um, it can be a really nice feature of your chat. Um, yeah, so for, for folks using open source and software public access channels, um, means like decision making can be in the open, right? It's public when you decide to do things. Um, new community members who are curious, maybe they heard about your project, can kind of get a feel for it before having to like take that step and like create an account. Um, end users who are using your software might be able to find the answer to uh, a support question without even logging in. Um, and your chat suddenly becomes more relevant to your project um, beyond that. Um, and so obviously if you self-host, you can decide which channels go um, are, are public access. Um, but for the cloud that is behind uh, the paywall, so to speak, except that um, we uh, support for free any open source project on the uh, cloud, so you just have to reach out submit an application, show me the link to your code, and your license, is, and I'll be like, great, here you go. Um, also, if you decide to self-host and want push notifications, great, just send us an application, you're, you're on our, our cloud, and, or you're, you're signed up. Um, also, we do academic research for free, um, so if you have a research group that you need to work with your 
people from around the globe, you know, Zilip can be a great tool for that. So um, really, Zilip is like focused on creating a vibrant uh, open source ecosystem, like ourselves being part of it, and then also making sure that other people can use uh, chat to really make their products and their code and their community stronger. So, um, and not to say that you know we can't obviously improve. Please let us know. <laughs> but um, yeah, that's just some of the cool things about Zoop that maybe is a little bit different from other folks. And that's all I had. Um, definitely open enough to questions. Um, this is a community you can click here um, on the slide. This is people who've um, opened channels to the public. You can kind of browse. This is the community that I was looking at. We've got some case studies. That's a link to our code and our documentation and our help center. So yeah, thank you for your time. Any questions, thoughts? Yeah. Yeah. What's this program called? Like, is it uh, Python, Ruby, um, Rust? Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so the back end is Python. So the server is a Django project, really. Um, and the front end is JavaScript, handlebars, templates. Um, uh, the mobile app that is current is React Native, but we are rewriting it in Flutter, which is in beta right now, so that'll be being released. Um, yeah, let me click on the code, I think. Yeah, so backend, server side is Python, mostly. Um, and uh, the, yeah, so you see the migrations. It's you know basically um, news. It's a Django project. It's just twelve years old. <laughs> and um, then the web here is the front end for the web app. Um, and so that's mostly JavaScript, TypeScript. running the web app that, we, that I was showing you. Um, and then yeah, we have mobile apps. Um, one is in, those are in a separate repository um, for the project. We have the Docker, yeah. We have a Python API. There is a terminal client that takes GSOP people every year <laughs> to make it better. Other questions? Other? Yes, uh, about the um, about the bots that you can connect with external services mm -hmm. like Grafana for alerting or. Yep. So let me jump over here. So. Yep. So um, mostly they link up. Um, with, uh, so most of these are just like web hooks that like when a, something happens in Prometheus, a message will go to your Zulip, right? And it's nicely formatted and you can click on it with links and it'll go, you'll get linked right to your Prometheus. Um, there are um, interactive and incoming web hooks, so ones that you can do that are more interactive. Um, so, you know, that you can send a message and they'll reply to you on Zulip. Those are much less common. Most people time people just want something coming in. Um, so one of the ones that we have set up, for example, here, oh, is it not? No, it is. it's just a different color when you're not logged in. <laughs> so like basically our commits channel is just a Zulip bot, or a GitHub bot, that's saying, you know, these were the things that got, uh, oh my goodness. We had a lot of dependency updates yesterday. Here's one, yeah. This is the main, Zulip main, um, so, the, you know, the bot's just sending a message uh, from GitHub every time it's got the commit message. Click on that, you can see the commit, uh, which is really handy for me. <laughs> I'm often like, ooh, that looks like something I should know about. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, but yeah, lots of um, different integrations, GitLab, GitHub. Entry. We have a Slack bot. So Instagram, yeah. There is apparently a yes. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah, yeah. It's in alphabetical order. Right. I should know. Uh, so it was the Hubbot. Um, so yeah. So this is one of the. repository where like the, the chat or the in the presentation the first link uh -huh. mm -mm -mm. communities directory yes <laughs> this one sorry this is on our Azul page ah, okay community yeah so this is a directory of everybody so this is an opt-in page we don't you know when it gets put here unless they want to um, but this would be communities that maybe I think they have to uh, have some sort of uh, open source uh, or um, uh, really a community. They have to have some sort of channels that if you click on it, people can see it without logging in. That's kind of like the idea of this community. There's the Lean Prover, which I linked to before. Um, So it's either you have an, uh, you have a repository, or maybe you're an open source project. Um, so yeah, and I don't know. We should probably list us on there. If we're not <laughs> listed, we should probably put ourselves on there. Um, <laughs> though it's on our own page, uh, but yeah, good point. That's a good note for me. Um, but we're here. Something which is not a question, but rather more an observation. But normally, the way I use chat applications is not really like using threads. But normally, what I do is I have like a list of channels that I'm subscribed, and I make sure that they are not like full of spam. So mm -hmm. because the spam channels get muted basically, mm -hmm. and then I read everything from those. Right. So I'm not sure. For me, it will be a big change to use really, but I'm not sure if it. Yeah, no, it's definitely... Be careful for the way I use chat applications normally. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think it's definitely um, partially, like, how your community is oriented, right? Like, is and how you're thinking about chat as far as, like, a place to communicate. Is it a place for people to come together and collaborate, or is it, like, a place for people to come in and talk in the moment and have a conversation? Um, and Zulu kind of takes the, the idea of, like, this is going to be here for the long term, right? Like, this is something I, I can go back and find messages from a year ago that are still relevant to me um, in the community. Um, so, and I think in a lot of other chat applications, like, if something got chatted about a year ago, like you said, they're going to send an email, or they're going to start, a, they're going to say something else again, versus like, oh, we already talked about that, you know? So. Yeah, the way I see it, and I think many people see it like that, is a Basically, chat messages are basically throw away, right? So if you right. want to make sure something stays, then you have to write a document or at right. least send them an email, right? Right. But see, the thing about email is you got to know who's in the conversation before you start it, right? When you're this model, like, we can have a conversation, and then, like, Albert joins the community tomorrow, and he can give us input about it tomorrow. And that same conversation that he wasn't maybe a part of from the very beginning, but he can see it, he can participate in it. Obviously, there are private channels, and you can have private DMs, uh, direct messages with folks on, on Slope. So there is like, you know, um, this is kind of the more open source, you know, as if we're talking about oh, Marcelino Free Software <laughs> focus of the talk, um, like things you can do kind of open with your community. Yeah, I guess it works better if you have like a flat organization or structure that like more hierarchical, right? Yeah. <laughs> because normally in hierarchical organizations, you don't 
have random people popping up of nowhere, right? Sure. <laughs> I guess also it depends if the community is very, very big or it's like a few people. Right. Yeah. Like if you really have a lot of uh, internal communication or something. Mm -hmm. But I mean, three people also work like topics are interesting, right? It's, it's a bit yeah. of a merge of a forum mm -hmm. and a chat application, right? So right. Like, it makes it easier to find that message you had yeah, one year ago. I mean, if it's only three people, you will not see it on the scroll back if it's one year ago, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because even even when w you are not many people, usually like, oh, look at this repository that for, yeah, I don't know, for something, for, or at this component that I found on the internet, and you forgot what the component was about, and you start searching, and you find Yeah. Can you read messages chronologically? Yes. Like a traditional chat application? Yes. So we have a combined feed. Um, so that's everything. That's everything merged together. Yeah, merged together. So this for me is again I'm not logged in. So this is just a, a, a feed of of all the public messages and the on the server. So you can see earlier today, I was doing a bit of moderating. <laughs> um, Lauren Menard, marking is resolved. <laughs> marking is resolved. Um, so yeah. So then it goes. 1245, 1251. Um, don't have this. Uh, um, and if you're logged in, the view is basically all of the ch all that you subscribe to, and um, that's not muted. So you can also like like when I was in, I did log in to the Rust, and as I mentioned, like I have the general and the new members channels muted. Because like I'm not those aren't things that I'm interested in. So um, if I go to my combined feed here, it's literally just going to be the announce stream and the Zillow stream messages because those are the only two that I don't have muted um, as well. Um, another interesting feature we have um, talking about notifications. If you're going to get notified. Um, so this little bell next to the topic. I maybe I want to follow the messages in Zulip, but this particular topic, I don't know. I don't I don't need to know about it. It's like it's really long and people are talking a lot and I'm just it's distracting. So I can mute it. Um, or maybe it's the opposite. Like it's really important for me that I know when this person responds. So I will follow this topic, which means I will get a notification either via email or text, whatever I have set up um, for my personal preferences um, so that I will know when that topic. Um, and then like the default is it's on red. When you log in, you'll see it as an unread message. So yeah, that's another nice little thing, uh, feature about topics is that you can like, you don't have to just follow the whole channel. You can actually follow a specific conversation that's super interesting to you. Um, people or the conversation or the topic is just really relevant or whatever. Um, and you don't have to look at the whole thing, you can just focus in on that one conversation. What's um, happening? Yeah, any other thoughts, question, feedback? Cool. Thank well, you. Thanks for the time. Thank you. Thank you. 16,000 people here? <laughs> Yeah. Wow. <laughs> They're not all logged in, I guess. <laughs> <laughs>